started. So I uh, um, welcome everyone to Dreams and Other Realities in the studio with artist Cindy K. Renteria. I'm so happy to see so many, so many of our friends here. Um, I'm Lisa Martin with Silver Spring Town Center. We're so glad to finally have Cindy's work, Cindy and her work to showcase tonight. She's one of my favorite MoCo artists. And I know you're gonna enjoy it. She's also got a, a lot of great stories and a lot of, a lot of meaning behind her work that we'll learn more about. Anyway, um, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you about a couple other events that we have coming up. Um, Silver Spring Town Center is a small nonprofit based in the Silver Spring Civic Building and we're completely virtual until probably at least the fall. So, but we, we're doing uh, over 150 events throughout the year. Um, poetry gatherings, art salons, art artist spotlights such as this. Um, our next artist spotlight will be on Earth Day and that will be featuring um, Lily Fisher from Australia, who works for Montgomery County, um, and she she merges art and science in her work. Um, so that's Earth Day, Thursday, August, or sorry, April 22nd at 8 p.m. And our next event is a special one. This this Thursday, we are we have invited a group of of writers and editors from the book. Um, deep beauty, experiencing wonder when the world is on fire. So they'll be reading their essays on Thursday evening at 7.30. I hope you can join us. And then our next comedy show is a week from Thursday at eight o'clock, Superhero Comics. And we have an array of other interesting programs coming up. So check out our spring schedule, which just released today. Uh, all of our events are made possible with generous support from Montgomery County, United Therapeutics, the Arts and Humanities of Montgomery County, Montgomery College, Maryland State Arts, and many others. And now let's Let's get to the program with uh, dreams and other realities in the studio with Cindy Renteria. Take it away, Cindy. Hi, good evening. Thank you for coming, everyone. Um, I'm going to do an overview of my art. Uh, as some of you know, I used to live in New Orleans and uh, I got displaced by uh, Katrina. And so I moved here to Maryland. So I broke up my paintings to ones that were in New Orleans and then ones that were here. And I also have one from when I was in college. So, okay, so um, trying to go to, oh, there. So this is um, New Orleans, um, Audubon Park. Um, my daughters went to Audubon Montessori School, which is a public Montessori school. And I would walk um, them to school in the morning. I would drive my car and drop them off, drop one of my daughters off and walk the other one around the park when she was a baby. And um, I put in the painting, I put my daughter playing the violin because she used to play the violin. And then there's a, a man playing a violin as well. And um, the sun and the birds flying. And this is a gouache painting. I painted mostly in gouache before I came to Maryland because um, I, I didn't really know how to transition into acrylic. And I wanted to paint in acrylic because you don't have to frame it. So, and this is, um, I started writing during the pandemic. I wrote all these poems to go with my paintings um, because it was such a lonely time and I put them on Instagram. So this is um, the Audubon Park painting and the poem. Filled with light and children in the park playing hide and seek. Because I can't see you, I hide with you. The colors are so beautiful. The sun is filling the day, the minutes with radiance, dwelling on our faces, our hands. 
jumping into memories, never special, just happiness on warm spring days. So I want to, you know, I don't want to be the only one talking. So if anybody has something to say, like I know some of you are from New Orleans. So if you want to, you know, chime in at any point, feel free. I don't want this to be a lecture. So um, I'm going to go on to the next painting, which, oh, there it's here. This is also New Orleans, the bayou, you know. And if you never lived in, in Louisiana, people have very um, unusual ideas of what a bayou is. And basically, it's just, um, you know, a lot of water and very flooded um, grassy plains. And um, in this picture, again, you see, oops, you see, um, a, a girl playing the violin and uh, I like to hide things in my painting and you can see also people flying or angels flying because we can't really fly in real life you know we have to fly in our dreams or in our paintings right so um I also like to um show the clouds you know and the sun, because you, you have to have light. Okay, I, okay. And this is um, the French Quarter and you have um, uh, St. Louis Cathedral in the background and the Greater New Orleans Bridge and the Magnolias. And the Magnolias, as you know, some of you there are these huge flowers and they smell so sweet. It's, you know, almost like um, it's just too sweet, but when they bloom, it's like the height of the summer, you know, it's the hottest part of the summer, but they're so beautiful. And this is like a family going to, this is a family going to, going on an outing in the park. And um, I like, I painted, with really, really bright greens and uh, bright blues at this point in my paintings. And if you see later on that there, are, the colors change. And this, um, this painting, I painted right after Katrina and I had the hardest time painting it because it was really hard, you know? I, I was, I just come to live here and I just was having a really hard time. And um, this is our house. We had, we still have this blue house in New Orleans and you have the Greater New Orleans Bridge in the background and you have um, angels flying and trees. And it always looks like the wind's blowing in my paintings, you know. So I wrote a poem about this is all during, um, when we were home during COVID. I wrote the paintings and I posted them. I wrote the poems with the paintings and posted them on Instagram. You swept away my life. Waters rushing in, pulling down everything in every space. My house looked like a hundred year old house. The furniture fell apart with a touch. No color was left. I used an ax to open the door to my painting closet, drying my paintings on garbage bags outside, hoping to save them, digging through piles like an archeologist. Most of the photos, papers ruined. The, neighborhood, the neighbors helped drag my appliances outside. Four feet of water, no school, no job, living in a new place with two weeks worth of clothes and people asking, have you lost everything? You can't lose everything if you lose yourself. You can't lose everything if you have yourself, excuse me. Um, yeah, people are very, um, uh, they mean well. And I, you know, after being home a lot, this was the painting that I actually lost in Katrina. I, 
had to um, bust out my paintings from the frames. And some of them weren't in frames, but the, this one um, stuck to the glass and I was painting in gouache on paper. So it just, I tried to get it off and it just tore apart. So I repainted it during um, the lockdown, during COVID, you know? And this is how I grew up. I lived in an apartment building in Brooklyn on the sixth floor. And it was very, you know, you think you couldn't see people, but you could see all the people in the windows. And then you have um, the people hiding or kind of, you can't see them in the, um, in the trees there. Anyway, do people, does everybody see the people in the trees? Anybody say something? Let me know that you're out there. <laughs> We're out there. We see the people in the trees, Cindy. You do. You yes. see, the see the people in the trees. I see them. <laughs> yeah. I was also in that apartment once a long time ago. Who's that? It's Elaine. Elaine, <laughs> you, oh, you went to, oh, that's my, my sister's friend from yes, college. Yes, your sister's friend who was in that apartment. Yeah. You were a You were a teenager. Sharon was my roommate in college. You were her sister, and... You gave up your place for me so I could sleep. Oh, I did? I yes, guess you, did. you gave I, uh, up your bed for me. <laughs> well, I don't even remember that. That's what me. I'm in one of those, I'm in one of those uh, people in the rooms there. <laughs> well, um, that was nice of me. I, I'm sure my parents. <laughs> that was there. nice of me. <laughs> It was very nice of you. It was unbelievably nice of you. I'm sure that was my parents' idea. I don't think I was that nice. <laughs> I can't tell. Okay, well, I'm glad you slept over. I don't even remember. Anyway, <laughs> you know, um, that apartment, those apartments are still there, and um, but we don't live there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, so um, I'm glad to know that, Elaine. Okay, this is from college, okay? So, you know, this is one of these projects where um, we did the House of Blue Leaves. We were supposed to do a poster for a playbill for the college. It was gonna be a play, right? Well, they didn't pick my, <laughs> they didn't pick my um, artwork. But people really like this painting. It's a very depressing play that I've never seen, but um, you know, they're ascending up into the sky, right? Sharon, you there? Sharon? <laughs> Here, I was muted, what? What, what is, briefly, isn't the House of Blue Leaves a pretty depressing play? Oh well, yeah, the wife goes nuts. Yeah, it's a little depressing. Yeah, so. <laughs> It's a pretty um, dark play, so that's why it's a pretty dark painting. But anyway, I still think, you know, it has a lot of light at the end of the tunnel there. Thank you there, Sharon. You're welcome. Okay, so this is a painting that I did in Maryland after the flood. And I had no idea what to name it. And um, this friend of mine said, um, before the storm, like before the hurricane, because it looked like to her, like, you know, the hurricane was coming because, you know, the wind is blowing and the, the trees are bowed, bent over. And, and then again, you see the angels up in the sky and the clouds and stuff. And our little blue house, <laughs> our little blue house is there in New Orleans, right there. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty windy there. Do you yeah. remember when the, we were in a hotel in Jacksonville, Mississippi, having just evacuated? Can you hear me? Can you hear my daughter? She's talking about the storm, evacuating from the storm. Can you hear her? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we were just watching the wind blow through the glass panels on the bottom floor. There was an inch of water where we were standing and this huge, 
metal frame of a billboard. You know, the billboard when you pass by on the highway was just blowing in the wind. And we were just all wondering if it would crash into the windows. It was an amazing sight. Yeah, we were, we were, then we went inside the building and there was this huge, big, you know, it was the lobby of the hotel and the lobby of the hotel had this huge window and we could see the wind pulling off the um, metal panels from the billboard and people's cars were underneath, right? So we told the manager of the hotel about the billboard falling apart and he was like, oh my God. And he went and called everybody to move their cars and we, when we were there, they wouldn't let the animals in. You know, when there's a hurricane or something, people had to make, they were making decisions according to not only their family, but their animals. Some people wouldn't leave because of their animals. And we took our dog and they wouldn't let him in the hotel. You know, so he was like in the car and all these people would come out and visit their animals in the cars. And then the guy and the manager of the hotel said, we could, we could bring the animals into the hotel. And I remember walking my dog and the wind was blowing so hard. I was like, go, go to, the, please, you know, you go. <laughs> because I didn't want to be blown away. Anyway. <laughs> it, was, it was wild. <laughs> Stephanie, where were you when the, um, when the hurricane hit? I was in Carrier, Mississippi. Did you feel that wind? Uh, yeah, and I was, we were watching the pine trees, uh, the tops were just breaking like matchsticks, and I had three horses in the field, and I was just uh, hoping that they wouldn't get hurt by anything flying, and they did an amazing thing. I wasn't quite sure what they would, would what they would do, but they turned all three of them with their backs to the wind and they stayed really quiet. So I went from window to window watching to see which trees had fallen and whether or not my horses are okay. And we had a major wind blowing in the front of our house that was blowing the water underneath the door. And I started out with some towels and then I got a mop bucket and a, and a mop and I was trying to get all the water up, but it was coming in quicker than I could get it up. So my brother went, who was with me, uh, ran ar went around um, the, the side of the house. He had to go through the back door and go around the side because we couldn't open the front door because the wind was too strong. I really thought mm -hmm. it was gonna blow the, the door in. Well, anyway, he took a rug and he rolled it up and he put it in front of the door to stop the water from coming in. Wow. And it worked. Thank God it worked. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next. Oh, I keep trying to, okay. This is, this is now me in um, Maryland. And I've never lived in the suburbs before in my life. I went from New York to New Orleans, which are both big cities. And um, it was a different um, experience for me to see all the houses looking alike, you know? But, you know, it, it's a pretty nice, safe place to live, kind of quiet sometimes, but it's, got, it's, it's been changing the longer I live here, the more it's gotten to be more like um, a city in a lot of ways. And this is me, this is me, my two <laughs> daughters, and my dog and my husband, you know? And then we're supposed, I don't, let me move this over. Like the, the sun is like beaming down over us, you know? And then you can see the, let me, I got, have to, you can see the people flying in the sky again, you know? <laughs> What's so funny? Anyway, okay, oh, Rochelle, hello, Rochelle. So, um. Oh, this is me and my grandpa. And um, so you see the, uh, whoa, 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 what happened here? Okay, whoa. This is my grandpa and uh, I loved him to death. And this is uh, 
another set of apartment buildings, but this is in a different location in Brooklyn. And um, you can see the playground here and uh, the water. And I guess that's Manhattan in the background and people sitting out in chairs. People would sit out in chairs and they'd bring their own chairs and sit out in front and then they'd talk and talk. And, you know, um, it, I really loved visiting with my grandpa and loved that apartment building. And then this is um, uh, called love because, you know, um, that's what it looks like to me, you know? And then you can see the, um, the, uh, the motion there of the, the stars and going to the moon. And then you see the people hiding. Do you all see the people hiding in the trees? Okay, why are the people hiding in the trees? I don't know. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I like the people. Who is that? Anne. <laughs> Anne. <laughs> I don't know. I like, I like kind of like making it like, um, like you have to kind of look through it to you know to see what's going on, right? So um, anyway, <laughs> um, and I you know this was a, a kind of a try to you know to make the 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 women look like me and the man look like my husband, you know, but it doesn't really exactly look like us, but <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, it's kind of romantic, you know. And then we have a love poem here. And this is another painting. And I actually sold this to um, some of the, I've sold some of the paintings I showed you, but this one I show, I sold to this woman. I was in Artomatic and she loved this painting. And she actually had me write, I had to write her boyfriend's name in the painting in order for her to buy it. Okay, so I wrote this poem. I, I say love, love me into the cold night air, love forever, follow me as I hold your hand, love in so many ways, remember to love yourself, hold your love in your heart, and then share your love, see it leave and fly. It is soft, it is gentle and soft. When it is new and old, it is beautiful. Love is a poem, a song, a painting. It is everywhere. Let us not forget to love in this time, love. And this also, I wrote this during the, Katrina, um, excuse me, coronavirus. <laughs> and um, so they're like dancing together. And I'll tell you why I have people dancing because I really, there's two things I love to do. One is dance, well, there's a lot dance, swim, and of course, paint, you know, and write. So they're dancing. And then of course I had to paint um, this area. This is a Lincoln Memorial, which um, is very, um, very historic. And there's a lot of motion in there and the, that painting as well. And um, I also have, okay, and this one is, um, there was um, this, um, I, I paint things to be in different shows and this was in a, uh, a woman, Jewish art, women's group and um, it's called Follow the Stars and uh, it's kind of Chagall-esque, you know, a little bit. And you have the man and the woman and all these children. And I only have two children, right? So, um, my kids kind of made fun of me when they saw this painting. And then the, they're, they're, um, the stars are going up into the sky and they're going all the way up to the moon. You know, they're like traveling, kind of coming off their shawl and going up into the moon and you see the water and the, and the town there. Does anybody have any questions about the painting? Well, not about this one, but okay, what's the deal with the angels? I love the idea of angels, you know, I like the idea of angels. I, I mean, I never met one, but it, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I like the idea of flying, you know, I think that would be fantastic if we could fly, right? 
But what is your idea of an angel? What's an angel to you? Okay. Um, I think an angel is, you know, a spiritual being that kind of helps you out, mm -hmm. you know? All right. Is that Anne again? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Cindy, um, I take I took the people hidden in the trees to be sort of more spirits. Is okay. that kind of what you wanted to convey, or did you want to convey more people just that you would see through the trees? Well, you know, maybe um, some people, you know, kind of hiding in the trees. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, hard. it's hard to see. You know, it's, it's hard when you can't see anybody. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay, so we have, um, this is another one of my poems. Uh, I did this um, a series called The Wanderers, because I feel like we're all kind of, wa what? Somebody was saying something. We're all kind of wandering around right now in a way, you know? So this is another poem about um, the coronavirus you know, just about, I kept seeing these, um, you know, news, um, when they had people on the news and they're all intense and they can't breathe and they have the, um, the um, respirators and the oxygen, you know. So I was just thinking about how just, you know, breathing became such a part of the coronavirus and just, how hard it is for some people during this time. So I wrote this poem. Breathe, breathe the air. So many people breathe, get better, breathe. Wind blow, breathe. Clean the air, breathe. Hold us in your hand, breathe. Let us be together again soon, breathe. Remember us, heal us, breathe. So. Um, thank God, you know, people are getting better, you know, but, um, it's kind of, it's a hard time. Oh, people were, um, people are texting me. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Has anyone taken the vaccine? I'm going to get the vaccine tomorrow, believe it or don't. Yeah. So um, we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, let me see. I don't know where we are in this, um, in, in my uh, slides here. So um, is everybody doing okay? Are we... Um, following okay this is um another poem this is um firebird and i painted this because you know the fairy tale about the firebird does anybody know the fire the fairy tale about the firebird no tell us well <laughs> um I, I don't really remember the whole thing but it's a russian fairy tale and it's very famous um, about um, this bird that helps people. And um, I <laughs> don't remember it offhand. I do remember um, uh, there are a lot of fairy tales about birds. And um, I love the, um, the motion of the bird, the bird flying through the, through the sky. And uh, so I, wrote this poem with the, the bird. This is also during the corona lockdown. Time, it flies away, moving slower, slower and picking up speed. I watch the days melt together. It is hard to remember what day it is. Can it be the same day somehow? Where are we? Does the sameness rob our dreams? I want it to change. The clock ticks on, sounds rising. All are here with me. This, the, <clears throat> the wind, the sun, and the rain, and the seconds, minutes, and hours that becomes every day. 
Okay, so oh, we're we're um, we're getting closer to the end here. Um, these are paintings that started painting um, small paintings to um, to to kind of um, get the flow going, and then this is also another very small kind of quiet painting where it has just like a lot of motion. And this is an interesting painting. Um, I didn't, you know, when you paint something, sometimes you don't really know what to, to call it. And um, um, I showed this painting during a, um, a Holocaust remembrance and somebody thought this had to do with the Holocaust, but um, so I, I named it Dark Flower, but it's still, you know, it could be just a meadow. I just like the, um, the motion of the, the mountains and the, the background there. So, um, I thought it had a lot of depth and stuff. And that's, that's the end there of my slideshow. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> oh, it's 7.30, oh. So um, I actually have some of my paintings to show you in real life. Um, I have a new message from somebody. Uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to say that um, when I moved here to Maryland, I found out from some friends that they were having uh, an art show about people that had, you know, survived or been had been displaced from Katrina. So from that, I met women from the Women's Caucus, and I had uh, my artwork in that show, and I became friends with them and. They were very, um, very welcoming to me as an artist. And I've been a member of their group for quite a while now. So that was um, a great um, thing to have an art show here when I had just moved here and being part of that. Well, I was gonna show you um, some of my paintings in person. This is my, my, <laughs> this is what I use to paint with. Um, I have all my paint, my brushes organized in this little container here. And then uh, I put my paint in a Tupperware container <laughs> and I open it up. I have my palette in there and I paint with it. And um, I like to, um, just kind of move my paintbrush back and forth while I'm painting, you know? And um, that's how I paint. So this is um, one of the, my most recent painting. It was a, it's, you can see everything goes to the, to the left. Why do you think that is anybody? <laughs> People that don't know me very well. <laughs> oh, I was gonna think? get the answer, but I won't. You're left-handed? Yes, I am, I am. I am left-handed, right? And people that are left-handed, there's not too many of us. Somebody was telling me it's just like 10% of the population is left-handed, is that right? Sounds right. What? Sounds right, sounds right. Something sounds like right. that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, what else do we have? Oh, this is um, the um, suburbia painting in real life. <laughs> close up and personal here. You can see the, um, so this one was one of my first paintings in acrylic here. And I'm trying to get it close up. You can see the, um, that I, I went over it with these um, con and dash crayons to, to make these lines, you know? So it has like a lot of texture. And then of course you have the angel there, right? So um, there, and then this is um, 
Now this is on canvas. The other one was on canvas board. And this is um, before the storm. Yeah. I like that one. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, and I have used like kind of, um, a, 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 it's kind of like, kind of has like a sheen to it because I use mm -hmm. some gold and silver and copper in it, you know? Mm. And then you have the um, you have the sun and the angels flying. Yeah. Well, I think it would be cool to fly. You know, I've had, I've had. I have to be honest and say I have dreams. I've had dreams where I was flying. You know, mm. has anybody else had a dream where they were flying? Yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, like, um, what that was about, but, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> it happens, right? I, people are messaging me, and I don't know how to, oh, I really like this one before, okay, you, that's gorgeous. I'm not sure which one, you know, like, um, so if you i should say the names of them so you don't know like, and here's um the one the the small one i told you it's kind of like this um we call this in the art world monotone because it's just blue basically just kind of um different shades of blue and stuff Cindy, how how has your paint has your painting changed um, since Katrina? Like after moving to Maryland, did it change at all? The cut, maybe your color palette seems a little different. Um, uh, and your 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 the images you you use maybe um, it looks more like you're into more abstract, whereas before you were painting a lot of the scenes. And the family scenes. Well, I think talk? that now I don't have as bright colors, you know, as I did when I was in New Orleans. Like in New Orleans, <clears throat> when I came to New Orleans, I came from Buffalo, New York. So you can imagine the difference. I came on a train and I'm on this train and I see the colors are just so bright this bright bright green everywhere you know mm -hmm. and the sun is so bright and the colors are so bright and people spend a lot of times out outdoors kind of like in florida because it's so warm a lot you know it doesn't get cold until october in new orleans you right. know so you have the summer that starts in um you know, when the summer starts in like June and it goes all the way to like October, you know? Right. It's so warm. Um, so I would say the colors aren't as bright. And then I started painting in acrylics. Oh, you started painting in acrylics once you came to, to uh, Maryland? Maryland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why did you change? Well, I always wanted to get away from watercolors and a, a gouache because you have to frame it. And um, also you have to, you know, you, it, it like it melts. Like I went, I had an art show and I brought all my paintings and, mm -hmm. and this is in New Orleans and I'm outside and the sun is beaming down on the artwork and the paint started melting actually. <laughs> inside oh, the yeah. glass frame the, wow. um, the, the gouache sticks the cotton dash sticks started melting <laughs> yeah cotton dash is like it's really oily yeah it melts so, yeah <clears throat> so it's not as like when you have an acrylic painting like this you know you don't have to worry about like water getting on it or whatever it's more <clears throat> It's more set, but I have to say that when um, getting back to New Orleans, when we had Katrina and I was, you know, my neighbors helped me move um, mm -hmm. all our waterlogged stuff out of the house. And then we, you know, we had to hire some people, but um, the paintings that were on watercolor paper, 
they really held up. I was really surprised, except for the ones I, that I told you I had, I had to learn how to bust the paintings out of the frame because they stuck to the um, glass or the um, plexiglass. So I just let them, instead of trying to peel them off, I let them dry and then I could peel the paintings off the, um, the glass or the plexiglass. So, so, yeah. Did you lose a lot of work in Katrina? No, I didn't. Actually, I just lost a couple of paintings because they were on um, watercolor paper. It was really res resilient. You know, I guess watercolor it was water, you know, it flooded. So they just faded, basically. But um, it was disturbing to me because I had to take all these paintings I brought them outside and I put them all around my house on garbage bags so they would dry. <laughs> and that really upset me. I was, because you know, I, I'm kind of like I paint and I hide my, I squirrel my paintings away and you know I bring them out when I want to, but just to stick them on my lawn on garbage bags, mm. it was very upsetting. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Stephanie asks in the chat, do you miss New Orleans and would you ever move back there? She says, I remember a show that you did on Magazine Street and you did pretty well with the paintings you had in that show. Oh, well, um, I don't know if I would move back there, Stephanie, because I don't know, you know, you kind of like, you know, like she moved to Colorado. I don't know if she would move back to New Orleans. You kind of like grow into, you know, the new place. Like I was really, in shock when I first moved here because people, you know, she knows people talk to you in New Orleans. You like you're waiting at the bus and you have whole conversations with people. People you don't want to have conversations with. People just talk to you. You know, like people talk a lot to you. And, and everybody has a porch. You know, and people sit on their porches. And it's not like oh you know everybody, but people talk to you. Where here it was like hello, hi, how are you? Good morning. <laughs> you know, that was like, you know, hard to get used to. But in a way, people are more honest about their feeling here. You know, in New Orleans, they're very polite. They're like, do you want to go out to dinner? Well, I don't know. You know, um, I'll see. So they don't come right out and say no. We're in the North and say no. <laughs> so anyway. Anne says, polite, exclamation point. I'll uppercase ah ha, ha. and <laughs> you don't think people in the south are polite not the people i know <laughs> i come from a family of very honest people and you know it's like you you're polite maybe you're maybe you're polite to total strangers, strangers. maybe yeah. total strangers but people you know like you i'm not gonna be polite to you what the hell <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> Polite me in? <laughs> no. No, but no, I, I understand what you're saying about the about the people talking. That does happen everywhere all the time. People will oh, have yeah. incredible. Everybody talks to you, right? Right, right. Uh -huh, that's true. You know, people it's like you don't even know these people. <laughs> they start talking to you and you're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you start walking away <laughs> no but yeah, um, you have to <laughs> you have to or you'll be there all day <laughs> that's right and then my mother you know my mother came to new orleans and we're checking out in the grocery store and she's going oh my god these people are so slow <laughs> because but in a way i miss that i miss that that um the character, people are such characters, you know? Like um, we had the neighbors, they have very colorful names, like um, Lemuel and Romney was the name of my neighbors, Lemuel and Romney, right? And then when I was giving birth, one of the women named their daughter Victorine. Mm. Victorine. Can you imagine somebody in the North naming their kid Victorine? Well, Victorine's an old French name. But can you imagine a Yankee, Anne? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they name people in the Northeast. I don't know. 
<laughs> they named them Mark and Sally and Howard and okay and Anne. <laughs> <laughs> now that was my brother my brother my four-year-old brother named me i hate him to this day for that i wanted to be named michelle, michelle. <laughs> you yeah. wanted a french name yep mm -hmm. oh. well um i wasn't too thrilled with cindy but i don't know cindy's okay you yeah. know you know cindy's kind of rare there's not many cynthia's there really aren't no, I'm my mother was, uh, she was really into short names. Like I'm Cindy and my sister is Sharon. Oh, you aren't Cynthia? No, I'm Cindy. I had, oh. I had, let me tell you, you know, everybody. I had teachers who would call my mother who thought I was being sassy when I said, my name is Cindy. They, would, <laughs> they, would, they thought I was being this naughty little girl. <laughs> They call my mother up and they say, your, your daughter said her name is Cindy in a very arrogant way. And my mother would say, that is her name. <laughs> Great. But um, I don't know. Do you think my work is kind of abstract? People? <laughs> Anybody? Well, um, hmm. I do. Oh, I do, know? Cindy. Yeah, it's Rita. Hi. Hi, Rita. How are you? Yeah. Thank you for coming. I feel yeah. free to show it's your great. video too so we can see you. Oh, damn it. Oh, oh come on. No, no, no. Oh, come, come on, on, Rita. Rita. Oh, no, I, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay, that's okay, Rita. I don't want to put you on the spot. Good. That's, I mean, I'm, thank you for coming. Yeah, it's fun to be here. I enjoyed your, your talk. Yeah, I think your yours is very abstract. Your your paintings. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay, it's They're hard. Not realistic, huh? Yeah. Yes. I don't know if it's totally abstract. It's sort of impressionistic and dream. You know, you're, you're talking about dream. It's impressionistic and dreamlike. So it's not totally abstract because you have. You have people and places and things that are recognizable. So abstraction means the things and the people and the places are, um, they're like, they're done in cubism or some other method so that they're not directly representational. Hmm. Okay. okay. Oh, hello. Hello, Lori. Thank you for your comment. Um, I'm not sure, you know, like when you're actually painting the paintings, you know, um, it's hard to come up with a, um, like you're there and I'm, I'm just, you know, trying to do stuff that's either is for a show or it's something that I like, I like look at it and I go, Oh, like, um, this painting, I go, Oh, that. That motion there, you know, that works. I like that right there, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that type of painting is more abstract because I'm not sure if it's a field or an ocean or, you know, I mean, it looks like a nature scene for sure. What was it meant? What was this meant to be, Cindy? Oh, it's a ocean, ocean. I grew up in Sheepshead Bay in Brooklyn and, um, it was, and we grew up by the water. Not actually, I mean, we didn't have a house right by the water, but I could ride my bicycle over there. And um, it was um, really neat because you could just go to the water like anytime, like we go to the water in the winter, you go to the water in the summer, you know? Hmm. And um, it was kind of nice. Um, I was um, kind of hard. Well, it was. I was used to being by the water, so I'm always. I always go swimming all the time, you know. But it's not the same when you live uh, in another place. Like the water in Brooklyn is different than other places. When I my, I used to live in upstate New York too, and they have lakes there. So that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Um. What was gonna, I was going to show you something else here. 
Uh, oh, oh, this is the bird painting. So this is on, oops, it's upside down. <laughs> it's, you see, this is a gouache painting and you see how it's on glass. And it's also not as uh, direct and you have all this reflection, you know, and you have to clean the glass and mat it and all this type of stuff. So it's not as um, accessible as they say, right? But it's a beautiful, I mean, that's a beautiful painting. People really like the birds, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, the birds are kind of like uh, the angels in a way, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, yeah. You know, I never could, oh, this is a, I never could really understand. I could never keep a bird in the house, you know? in a cage and stuff. But some people get a lot of pleasure out of that, you know? Mm, right. <laughs> right. What, what have you been painting a lot since, um, you know, we've been on lockdown? Well, I told you, I showed you the, um, let me see if I have, I have, I have to go get, I've been painting these little paintings like this and this, right. and then I read, I did that, um, the painting over of the um, blues, you know, where the people were hiding behind the trees and stuff. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> why is that so funny? <laughs> There's this, you, it, it, they, that, that painting has a lot of charm and, you know, the people in the windows and, and the tree, the people hiding, but there's just a lot of um, playfulness and charm to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you, Anne. <laughs> um, well, I what um, it was kind of um, I kind of didn't like living there in a way because there was so many. Everything looked the same, you know. Living where? where? In Brooklyn, in that uh, in those apartment buildings, because everything looked the same. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't seem like it was like so much. Um, uniformity and I didn't like that. I like, you know, things to look different and be different and have colors. And it wasn't very colorful. And then um, they had a lot of trees. And at one point they um, they cut the trees down. So that was upsetting to me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because they thought that, oh, this is, they thought people were hiding in the trees and um, <laughs> <laughs> somebody got mugged and they were like, so this was their solution. Oh, they really did. It was, right. it was for security. Yeah, somebody got, oh, so my their solution God. was to cut the trees down. Oh, no. I'm telling you, this is a true story. Right, Sharon? Do you remember that? Sharon. My sister, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sure, she says sure. <laughs> anyway, um, if you want, I can go get the. And did somebody say something? Okay, I see people are dropping off. Maybe I'm getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> Who has um, some questions? Okay, are, you're gonna go get. So you're gonna go get something. Yeah. Cindy? Yeah. Okay, so I can chat with folks. Okay. While you're gone, I guess. Okay, so so how do you how does everyone know um, Cindy? How do you know Cindy? We had the same uh, midwife. Oh, great! Who's that, Anne? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, great. And that was in New Orleans. Yes, in New Orleans. Yes. Are you still there? Uh huh. Yeah, I was born and raised here. And and how many other people? Um, are from New Orleans here on the call. Some people are muted. I know there's a couple others from, that have lived in New Orleans, but there was one woman living in Colorado, mm -hmm. I think. That's what she said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a bit. It's a big change. I volunteered on Rita Katrina Relief, so I was down in, but I was in Beaumont. Texas at a Red Cross Center. 
through the Peace Corps or Crisis Corps for a month. Mm. Yeah, it's a totally different, different world in every way. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see how Cindy's art has changed since she's changed her where she lives and uh, well, I, I it's made, still distinguishable as hers. I made the comment um, on the sideline that, um, cause I've lived around the country and around the East Coast and I noticed, <clears throat> I noticed when go going up North cause I lived in Saratoga Springs, New York and uh, outside of Chicago that there was a color shift a complete, I mean, I noticed it. The light was completely different. So I know exactly what she's talking about. You mean the, the light from the sun? Yes, the sun and, and the quality of, of the brightness of the colors is completely shocking coming from here and going to upstate think, New York. I think it also has to do with um, humidity in the air. I've lived, cause I've lived, I'm from San Diego. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things look just crisper in San Diego, maybe because it's dry. This is true. I, I think in, in humidity, maybe it's more muted. But I think also things are more vibrant. You know, people tend toward more vibrant colors in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and being more creative and free spirited. Um, so, yeah, so Cindy also found, she was saying that she wasn't so keen on New York because things were more uniform and bland, but in which case, I think a lot of her work was influenced by the nature that she would visit, oh, okay. is what she wrote in her artist statement and mm -hmm. um, has mentioned to me. Um, oh. So those, those are her three periods, I guess, distinctive periods from her life. We'll have to ask her what she's working on now. Um, Martin Park says, I met Cindy at networking event here in DC and have enjoyed following her artwork. Uh, Stephanie, I lived in New Orleans many years, but now I'm in Colorado. I met Cindy in New Orleans when we were both in our early 20s. What part of Colorado are you in, Stephanie? Canyon City. Um, it's about an hour and a half south of Colorado Springs. Uh, wh what's the name of it? Canyon City. Canyon, Canyon City. City. It's, okay. It's spelled C A N O N with the little, what's that little thing? Canyon. Like a, it's from Spanish. Enye. Field day. Yeah, Enye. Enye. Mm -hmm. Enye. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm back. And okay, we're just talking about you. Talking <laughs> you. I was asking how everyone knew you. Well, um, I have. We have a, I've been. I have the pleasure of knowing people for a long time. Yeah. Um, like um, Anne, we know we knew each other from when our kids were babies, and they're mm -hmm. all grown up now. <laughs> but. My daughter's 26. We went to oh, wow. the same preschool. And then um, Stephanie and I, yeah, we were from New Orleans. And um, also, you know, well, I, I don't want to go through everybody's name and how I know them because they can right. tell it themselves. But um, it's amazing to me when I think about how old I am and how I did all these things when I was young. and. Now I'm old now. But my, daughter says, my daughter says I'm not old. I'm not old. Uh, <laughs> so show us what you you went and got some more works. Yeah, to I show did. Us. Yeah, I wanted to show you this. This is like from college. This is when I started. This is, I think this is this is when I first started painting in watercolors. Ooh. You can see the difference in the um the technique and stuff. It was very light in the beginning. And then, you know, I worked on it and got more depth and depth. And stuff. 
And, and your um, and your objects of your paintings during in New York, your period of time in New York was more influenced by nature, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I always have been influenced by nature. I don't. I find that it's very. Um, the trees are very um, uh, important aspect of my painting, and also the water and the mountains. When I used to live in upstate New York, mm -hmm. um, I could, it was so beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. And then um, the, it was so green, but not the same green as New Orleans, like the, the bright green, but the mountains were so beautiful um, as well. But I wanted to show you that um, I did do a painting where I had this period where I was writing in my paintings and I, I wrote in this painting as well. I think the water and the trees are more, or the most um, recurring mm -hmm. type of theme there. I don't think you can see where I wrote, here it is. You see? Uh, right, yeah. you have some text on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it say? It says, um, I will bend like a tree and not break. Mm -hmm. um, and this is um, kind of a funny, odd story. Uh, I used to go to this coffee house and there were all these people that were kind of having a little bit of a hard time. And I found out that they had all been referred to the coffee house by their doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so this woman <laughs> told me this story about how, you know, this is what you have to do in life. You have to be like a tree. You have to bend and not break, you know, because she had served, she had suffered some um, illness, you know. Mm -hmm. so. But um, I'm not really sure if that's kind of like, is that, that's kind of seemed very symbolic to me at mm -hmm. the time, but, you know, I don't know how other people feel about it. And you painted yeah. that out right after Katrina? Kind of um, later on. I just kept thinking about what you said. But I think I would take that we have to bend. We can't, mm -hmm. you know, you can't be a rigid person. That's what I got out of that, is that you can't be rigid in life. Because if you're rigid, you know, you're going to break. And that's not going to be mm -hmm. beautiful. And my right. mother would always tell me that. She would say, you know, Cindy, you can't, um, she would always tell me, you know, not to, to do certain things, because if I did, you know, you know, nobody's gonna, you never know if anybody's gonna be there for you. So you gotta, you know, make sure you don't take everything too seriously and stuff like that. You know? mm -hmm. And, uh, what anyway. do you have here? so I, um, I, I like this um, painting. Did every, what happened? It, it looks like um, you. I lost Lisa. Oh, I don't know. We still see you, Cindy. Oh, okay. Oh, there you are. Well, I brought the um, the uh, the painting that you liked um, of the the Sorry. apartment building. Mm -hmm. I had muted. Is... Oh, okay. What? I had. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I told you this is a recreation because this is a painting that I, I lost in mm -hmm. Katrina. So. Oh. But I, you know, it's very interesting to me, this painting, because um, I don't usually use red like this, but, you know, it really worked the red and the black, and then you can see the, the people hiding. <laughs> so maybe I'm hiding. That's, that has to be it, that I'm hiding behind the trees because, you know, it's all you. It's kind of like your dreams, you know, right? Right. So maybe certain I'm hiding some aspects of me, right? Or maybe you feel like people are watching. Yeah, I did feel that in that apartment building, as you can see. <laughs> 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 Looking out their window, you know? Right. And then there, there was a bench in front um, that people used to sit. But I, you know, this is kind of interesting because they're green. You see that green? I did that a lot with the, the paintings in New Orleans. It's, 
it's actually not as bright as some of the greens and the, the paintings in your home. Anyway, so um, did um, anybody have some comments about what about the poems? What do you think about the poems? Did anybody have any comments about the poems? They're good. You got some good ones in there, Cindy. Mm -hmm. I used to go to, um, I actually have the painting upstairs, Brasotti's Coffee House. How many people remember Brasotti's yeah. Coffee? This is, yep. Uh huh. Okay, so Lisa, our friend Bob Brasotti was this, like, he was like um, a second generation hippie, right? <laughs> <laughs> His, his grandfather had a commune. That's how much of a hippie he was, right? So he started, he would go around the country doing coffee houses and he did some in California and Berkeley and everything. And then he came to New Orleans and he had a coffee house and he would have, he would write a play every year and everybody in, you know, people that he knew, his friends would be in the play. And I was in the play one year and we went to, New York, and um, we performed the play in theater from the New City, and I was in the Breakaways. But anyway, um, I forgot why I was talking about Bob or sorry, but um, he was- You were talking um, about your painting. Oh yes, yeah. so I had, had did a painting of him and him um, in New Orleans. And um, it was just, um, kind of a, a great time to be in New Orleans. I think New Orleans and big cities are good places for people that are very young, you know, because mm. you can experience a lot of things. But has anybody gone to Versotti's? Stephanie, did you go to Versotti's? Anne, did you go to Versotti's? Uh, yes, I, was, I yeah, did. Years ago. Right, years okay. ago. Well, what um, is Versotti's? It's a coffee house in New Orleans. It's not there anymore because um, Bob um, passed away and then um, the coffee house uh, became no more once he passed away. But it was a really great place, you know? I met Cindy networking, yeah. Hi, enjoyed the art, thanks. You're welcome, okay? So, um, we used to, um, it was more like a community center than a coffee house because they have on, what, on New Year's Day, they would have 1,001 croissants. <laughs> and he, yes. And he would buy um, this, uh, the pastry for the croissants from a baker, Brad Ott's um, from Croissant de Or. He would buy the pastries and then he, there would be, He'd have all these aprons and he'd have all these little kids rolling out the dough. So all my daughters would be out there rolling out the dough and we would be, we would cook the croissants all day from like 10 o'clock in the morning to 10 at night. People would be, wow. we would be making croissants and he would have all these, you know, things you could have, you could have like, you have to have black eyed peas and cabbage Mm -hmm. on New Year's Day and um, and then we would have all these you know like different sauces to put on the croissants and stuff so wow was he, he originally from New Orleans or New York or no he was from actually I think yeah I think he was from New York so his yeah. his grandfather started a commune in upstate New York and um, he went to like some Ivy League school like Yale or Harvard and stuff he was quite a character. <laughs> yeah. Someone wrote in the chat that he had passed. Yes, he had passed. He, um, he, oh, you said what happened, Stephanie. Yeah, I, I saw. Yes, he jumped off the looming bridge, Bob Rossoni. Oh, tragic. But it's yeah. nice you have nice memories of him. Yeah, I do. He was um, a great guy. He was um, quite, um, quite a character. There's a lot of people in New Orleans. I think that's what drew me to what I liked about New Orleans is that people had room to be characters, you know? <laughs> More eclectic. 
<laughs> yeah, they they had yeah they could be characters in New Orleans. You know? But wait a minute, you're telling me in New York City people didn't have room to be characters? Well, yes, in New York City, but I don't know about where we live. What would you say, Lisa? They have room. Uh here in the dc metro region yes no i mean <laughs> i always say the little secret about washington dc is all the um you know all the kind of highest achievers in class have moved to dc to save the world so it's all the really smart kid nerdy kids yes, yes. and that's so you'll you know it's easy to just go anywhere and randomly meet someone who's incredibly intelligent. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm reminded of this when I go home to San Diego, which is not like that. And people think Washington DC is above Portland, Oregon. Yeah. What? <laughs> so, you know, I get mistakes like that more, you know. So that's what I love about DC is that it's more, you know, in it's more interesting creative maybe not so much but there is a creative culture here you know yeah. there are a lot of artists um and it's it's just a bit more cerebral here mm -hmm. rather than you know creative um and free it's not so free-spirited mm -hmm. and um even just in how people dress mm -hmm. um are you saying it's serious it's more serious is that what it is? it's more yeah it's more serious i mean when you walk around the street in dc you might know someone is experiencing homelessness but you might see the same looking type people in warm parts of the country my my home city included who are just regular people but they are dressed like dc homeless people um so it's kind of <laughs> It's, it's kind of, it's more like my, my friends and family who visit here comment, you know, that people dress more, you know, dress up more, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit more here. Um, so, and that's, that's reflected in their expression and even mm -hmm. with art, maybe, Maybe mm -hmm. there's more control. I don't know. I, I mean, I know a lot of artists locally who are great. There's some artists on our call. Maybe they'll want to chime in and give. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think there is the freedom. Jackie Hoisted. Yeah, she's come up with some great. Jackie talent. is very talented and also an activist. So she's also, you know, um, but I wouldn't say I'm gonna I'm gonna add Jackie's spotlight. Hi, Jackie. Hi. <laughs> Are you in Ireland now? Back yeah. home in Ireland? Well, my background, my virtual background. Is <laughs> <laughs> Great. I know you're in Bethesda, so home, you're home. But what do you think? What do you feel? Do you feel like it's free spirited here in DC, or is there more more of a cerebral kind of oh, angle on uh, art here? I think I, I don't I know. I know a few free spirits here. <laughs> right. So I was I was enjoying the conversation about the talk about New Orleans because when you're talking there about you know everybody talks to one another, it's the yeah. same in Ireland. Like myself and my husband have been thinking of moving back and. Um, you know, I, so I, my granny's house is coming up for sale and we thought, oh, <gasps> maybe we would look at that, but it's in the middle of nowhere. It's very remote. Where is it? It's in Le County Leitrim. In Leitrim. Okay. I don't know Leitrim uh, so as well. It's over on the West Coast, but not, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a little bit inland. It's, inland. it's kind of yeah. like a little lakes around there, but it's, very, it's, it's pretty, but it's very remote. And yeah. Um, so I said to my brother-in-law, but we don't know anybody. And he said, don't worry. Everybody will get to know you in a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's kind wow. of... Yeah. And, you know, everybody loves characters at home too. You know, it's really, it's precious. So instead of everybody being the same, and, I, you know, I do note like that, you know, here everybody dresses the same. It's true. Because it's like the uniforms that we wear here as, as opposed to... Like if you go to New York, people have personal styles and yes, they, yes. You know, they'll make a rag look great, you know? <laughs> <laughs> great. 
Well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's different. Yeah, and it's a little, yeah, it's a little more formal and subdued, I guess. And even compared, Ireland would be more informal. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because I lived in Galway. It's kind of like really stuck up or something if you, you know, if you've been yeah. So. Yeah, you don't want to be full of yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how do you and Cindy know each other? I don't know, Cindy. Uh, we've known each other. Is it, should, are you a member, were you a member of the Rock for the Art League? No, I, I was in some art watch things and no, I'm, I, I'm, I, I knew you before though. Oh, you did? I think so, yeah. But I can't, I, so that's why I always assumed it was the Rock for the Art League because I was, you know, I, I was a member for a long time and I was the membership chair, I was the program director there for one. For well, one. I think I tried, I was um, in, Maybe one year I was a member, but that so was it. That's it, you know. So I certainly knew your name. So right. maybe maybe that's it, you know. Yeah. And then and then I got to know you uh, through Art Watch, certainly anyway. Yeah, right. really you're fantastic. The things that you did through yeah. Art Watch. Thank you. Thank you. Really Dad. fantastic. You Take really are both activists of source. Um, Jackie's activism might be more apparent, whereas Cindy. Cindy speaks to social issues, environmental issues, you know, um, you know, human, human stories in her work. So I think you're both activists too, in different, very different ways. But um, Jackie is also going to be presenting a program with us on Earth Day. Oh. Um, on the 22nd at six o'clock. What, what is the title of it, Jackie? Ooh, uh, I think it's uh, fungal, fungal, futures. fungal Futures. I think I should have called it Fungi Futures. It would have been better. But anyway, fungal. Fungi, fungal Futures, uh, Art and Science Make Common Ground. And it's, um, so just to give you the long story about how this came about, my, my, um, at my mom's funeral, actually, two years ago, I saw my niece again for the first time in probably 15 years, and we were chatting, and she asked me what I was doing with my artwork, and I said, oh, I'm, I'm doing work around fungi now, and she started to quiz me, and it turns out she's a biologist, a plant biologist, and her work was working with fungi. So, uh, so, so since then we've established a relationship. So she's going to give a talk on uh, what her work is about. Um, her PhD was in, um, you know, how fungi are being used to advance food production in the world, and fungi are being used for packaging and everything now. It's really like has taken off in the last few years. So she'll talk about that aspect of it, and then I've been creating a lot of different works. I make. I make some materials out of uh, some forms out of fungi. You grow it, you mold it, uh, you bake it just like you would if it was clay. Different, but but a similar technique. And um, and then I've been doing some other multimedia work as well. So a lot of computer work, a lot of drawing. Um, so I'll be sharing everything that I've been working on um, in the last two years. Oh, um, mm. so Anne is asking. I'm sorry. And P Plake, is Plake. it Plake? Plake. Mm -hmm. So Anne's um, one of two people I know that their family is from New Orleans. They've been around for like hundreds of years. Is that right, Anne? Yeah, since 1765. And my other friend, um, they're from different um, ethnic backgrounds, but they both believe, you know, the whole, well, I don't want to go into that. Should I go into that, Anne, or not? Into what? I don't know what you're going into. Where are you going okay. into? <laughs> you know, people from New Orleans, um, when the English came to New Orleans, that's how long ago her family has been in New Orleans. They started associating different groups to, to race, where the people in New Orleans really didn't associate themselves to different races. So it's very interesting. The history of New Orleans is very interesting, you know? And then, um, do you know Gail, uh, Anne? You probably don't know Gail. I don't know, Gail who? Gail Bivens? No. Rainey? No, it doesn't. Do no. So her family was around 
New Orleans at, at the same time. And um, it's just, um, it's just very, a very interesting history and in that her family has been around for hundreds of years, you know? Like people from New Orleans and New York, we haven't been in New York and New or and uh, Maryland for hundreds of years, you know? Right. Just this history. Mainly is. just over a century at the, I mean, or so. No, uh, uh, New York? New York City's been there for- Oh yeah, New York, yes. New York City's been there for hundreds of years too. Right, but there was mass mass immigration to New York, like at the in the 1890s. Oh, the and then early part of the century, my all my ancestors came, like from Italy and Ireland. Okay, yeah, okay, I get in the 1890s and early early 1900s. But yeah, Anne points out that Mardi Gras one is only one day of the year, that's when people mask, the float riders mask, but that's different. I think it's simply that this is an old port city and people come from all over, bring their styles with them and it's tolerated. Um, New York City is the same, people from all over, quirky and tolerated. And the, 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 the big difference too though, I mean, there's a few things like the environment, the, the climate is totally different. Yeah. So a hot climate is going to lend itself to a more casual clothing if we're, and then style, I think. And then um, also the type, the commerce, the commerce, you know, you, you'll see a lot more suits walking around New York than in New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh, just because of the type of industries that are there. Well, um, that's not really true because you have Tulane and Loyola there. And we have a lot of international students. But I wanted right. to stick up for my home, my home city, New York, for a minute. Because I, I think that um, I'm from New York. And New York is very artsy and unique. And um, there are so many really beautiful aspects of New York. Like you'll be walking down the street and all of a sudden there'll be like a courtyard with vines and stuff and you know benches that somebody's come up with or or there'll be beautiful um like there'll be somebody has created a beautiful scene in a very urban atmosphere and also of course central park is just really beautiful mm. and the plays outside in new york when they have um shakespeare in the park and mm -hmm. stuff like that it's it but it's it's a very it's kind of um it's a more harder environment than new orleans was more carefree but uh you know but it it was very new york, new york is very beautiful in a lot of ways and very artistic as well and a lot of frenetic energy or you know having contact with such a mix all the time. Yes, yeah, yeah. You you yeah. know you meet so many different people, and you know there's so much, so many different restaurants, and and the fashion that's what was really big was you know the clothes people wore, you know, and uh, that everything's there, the plays and the um, TV stations and things like that, mm -hmm. and. The, and the, the water, like people don't really think about New York and, and people spending a lot of time in the water, but it's a big, you know, it's an island and all the different boroughs are pretty much covered with water. Mm -hmm. It's very Sorry, beautiful. Like they actually had people would go out in fishing boats where I lived. You know, you could go out and rent a boat for the day and go fishing or they would have people go out and fish and they would bring their catch back and you could buy it at, you know this is in Brooklyn sheep's a day on Saturday and Sunday you know so um it's almost time to go yeah you make me miss uh, New York and make me want to visit New Orleans again I'd like to go for Mardi Gras I've never been for that but um well, Better to go for Jazz Fest. Jazz Fest, yeah. yeah I I guess that, that's what the local city. Yeah. 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 Jazz Fest is a better way to introduce yourself to the city. And Why what month is Jazz Fest? Well, this is going to be October. First week in May, right? No, it's in October this year. 
Well, it used to be like that. No, they moved it so they could have it. They moved it to October? Right, because they want they want people to get vaccinated. And so things will be opened up by October. And I think that's real rational. Well, you know, it is that was one of the best things in New Orleans is um, the jazz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and Stephanie mentions uh, to Anne, I'm not in the chat, I'm not talking about the masked writers on floats, I'm talking about the people in the streets of the French Quarter and events such as Mom's Balls. Mom's Ball is, there's, um, in New Orleans, there's all these different groups, people are members of like Mom's Ball, there's the Vucre, the crew of underwear, Mondo Cayo, and people become members of these groups and some of them are walking crews and they wear costumes and some are, the, the, the ones that cost a lot of money, the ones with the floats like, um, like Bacchus and, and Demian and you spend thousands of dollars to be in those crews. But I've never even heard the term, Cindy, moms. But what does that mean? What's a I've never heard it either. Ball? You don't know about the moms? No, I've ball? never heard of it. No, yeah. never. I know the what is that? balls. What's it's, a ball? um, it's a group that has, this, you know, they have this big party. I think they have one big party. I went to the mom's party. And people um, get dressed up in a different theme. And they have the king and the queen. Oh, okay. It's kind of... Um, a little on the raunchy side. Some of the groups, <laughs> that's a raunchy. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never, uh, never knew about it. Uh, of course, you know, I lived a sheltered Catholic schoolgirl life. So, oh come on, this is, you know, Anne goes hunting with her brothers. You know, no, my cousins, my cousins, cousins. You go hunting with your cousins, right? Yeah, that's but I have, I just started doing that. <laughs> I just started doing that. <laughs> Wow. But no, I mean, I was, I was, I was very sheltered when I lived at home with my parents. Oh my God, they were horrible. They chained me to the house. <laughs> uh, you have two brothers, right? No, just one brother. That's oh, it. one brother. One brother. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a he's a nice guy. Very boring engineer. Oh my God. <laughs> Anne is a writer. Oh, great. She wrote for the Times Picayune when they used to have the Times Picayune. No, no, no. I didn't write for them. I was an editor at the Times Picayune. All the writing I did was on my own at home. No, no, no. Oh, you were an editor, <laughs> which yeah, was the big, the big newspaper in New Orleans. We only had one newspaper. Yep, but now it's gone. It's merged right. together. Yep. Merged with the newspaper in Baton Rouge. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Right. Well. Oh. It's time to go, I guess. Yeah, well, well thank, thank you. you all. Oh, I'm so glad you had this. This is great. Thank you all yes. for coming. Oh, Stephanie's talking about the decadence ball, which is... Oh, now that I know. That about. is raunchy, raunchy. I'm telling you. <laughs> I know about that. I'm going to be looking these up when I get off of this call. <laughs> <laughs> that one, you have to... Um, the decadence ball is... Um, you have to get somebody has to invite you to that, and it's yeah. kind of like a little bit of an underground ball. Oh. But it, it, that's in line with Southern decadence, right? I don't know. I never went to Southern decadence. Anyway, we could go on and on, but thank yeah. you all. Thank, yes. you, so thank you so much, Cindy, Kay, and Taria. Awesome thank to you. dig deeper into your wonderful work. Ooh. We love we love seeing your your work keep. Keep painting and writing as well. I also enjoyed your writing, so and all the stories. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hope to see you at thank another you. program. Thank you. Uh, good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you all for coming. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.